just want to point out that there are two videos on index views, one for standard edition and one for enterprise edition. I have shared a little bit of the videos that, that make sense across both videos. Uh, ironically, the time has been almost the same for both of them, uh, 28 minutes or so. So um, I just want you to realize that there's a significant difference between the two and they are described in these videos, although it appears that they almost are duplicates of the same same amount of time. But half of it is different uh, and half of it might be very similar because um, they both are index views after all. Okay, um, so I just want to point that out uh, for this video. Okay, index view of SQL Server is a fantastic technology and something that every reporting person should be aware of and should try to utilize whenever possible. It makes your queries instantly hundreds of times faster uh, if utilized right. Sometimes in the past you might have done some of these kind of things by creating additional aggregate tables. Okay, so for example, let's say you have a reporting system that reports on sales um, and you go from date to where you click on and you show all the dates and all the sales amounts. Uh, then you might click on that row for a certain date and it will drill down into the store and break that out by store, uh, all the sales for store amounts. Then you break that out and it might break that out by product, uh, each of the stores and what they sold of that product, right? Okay, but you, let's say you're going against an extremely large table. Um, in the past, what people would do to make this fat, you'd have to, in order to get this out of a very large table, you'd have to do a group by. Uh, you have to group by date on the first screen, and then on the first drill down, and then the next drill down, you'd have to group by date and store, and then the next drill down, you'd have to um, group by uh, date, store, and product. Okay, and against a very, very large table, even with indexes created that to help it, this can be uh, quite a drag on the system and on your report. So it might take 20 seconds or even a minute or even longer between each click. And that's not the kind of uh, reporting these days that most users expect. Um, now I'm not even talking about cubes. I'm just talking about regular relational uh, data warehousing. Okay, so what I'm talking, what I want to show you today is a is a a fact sales table that has about 500 million rows, which isn't unbelievable for a lot of companies. This is not unusual. So, but it is uh, painful if you don't have indexing already created on it. And even with indexing, it, the group buys can be quite slow. And going back to our example, what some people did as they go through that the, that report report where they drill down, they might actually behind the scenes go to different tables that they had aggregated in the past, and do selects against those in order to increase improve the speed of the <coughs> of the queries. Okay. So anyways, just to demonstrate, first of all, a very simple report, where is return back date key account and a sales a sum of sales amount by date key. Okay, so very, very simple as our example goes. And I'm just gonna create a non-clustered index on the date key and include the sales amount. And this is basically is a covering index. So when it runs this query up here and behind the scenes in the report, it will it will get uh, it won't have to go out to the entire table it will it'll be able to go to the index and get the data from the index okay it looks like the index completed and what I'm going to do is turn on the actual execution plan and and, and to run this without an index that's going to use on five million rows it will we could wait all day so I made sure I put the got an index that we're going to be able to use um, and 
what we're going to do here is uh, turn on the execution plan so we can take a look at that afterwards. I also want to set statistics IO on so we can look at how many page reads because that's not a perfect indicator but quite a pretty good indicator of how resource intensive it is or at least at the minimum how resource intensive it is. You can't tell what it's doing in TempDB because sometimes work tables are created there so you can't see how how much pounding that takes but you can see uh, in general how many a lot of pages how many pages come back to some minimum amount. Okay so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to set statistics statistics IO on okay and we're going to also go up to query and I'm going to display include X actual execution plan so when it finishes it's going to tell me whether it used this index or not that's really this index or not which I'm assuming it will because it covers everything in this in this query okay so remember this is the query we're going to or one of the queries we're going to use in the report and um, we're going to see how this works so I'm going to set statistics IO on click there and then I'm going to go ahead and run this guy and we're going to see how long it takes or how much IO it, it consumes to get to to finish this report okay so I'm execute so as you see it's executing I'm going to pause for a moment and come back when it's done Okay, as we look at the execution plan, we can see that the um, data here, and if you looked under object, that's what's object is looking at. It does an index scan, so it's scanning the index. Now, it's not the clustered index scan. If it's, if it's, if it's scanning the index clustered, the clustered index scan, then it's scanning the entire table, okay? Here is doing the 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 non-clustered index uh, just an index scan on this object called object uh, under the object field here, which as you see that's the non-clustered index we created. Now remember that non-clustered index, all it has in it is the date key and the primary key, which is it isn't part of the definition, but under the covers it has the um, primary key also. But anyways, it's very skinny. It's a the day key is an integer, and the primary key is I believe an integer or a big int. So we're looking at about 16 bytes. So um, it's not like the entire table, which might be I'm not sure, but maybe uh, 150 bytes or so. Okay, so it 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 reduces the, the number of pages it has to return because it's not it's covering. I'm sorry. It, it also will include the sales amount field, which is another. Uh, couple, several bytes. So basically, um, all in all, it's still returning only a very small subset as opposed to returning the entire table, uh, the entire row of each one. It just is go it's just looking at the index, okay, which reduces the number of pages that it, it's returning. So it is fairly efficient, right? But as we're moving towards our real goal of this this lesson, is what is the effect when we go to these things called index views. So I'm gonna, I have three index views I'm gonna create. I'm gonna create the first one real fast and we're gonna compare it. And this is the index view. So I'm creating it. You have to have use, there's certain syntax, you can look this up. Uh, you have to use schema binding. There's, there's a lot, there's some restrictions to the index view. So you'll have, to, you can go and look all that kind of stuff up, but to give you a, a how it works in general uh, we're going to create the view and it's the, basically a view exactly on the on the query we just ran right but it's not going to store it's only going to store the results set in this index view so the index view right there's nothing stored in the index view so when I execute this it's going to be immediate to create the, the view that's just the metadata the real th the real punch that happens is when you to persist the data that's the result of that view and what makes it all so fast is when you create this unique clustered index okay on the view so here's the it's a it says create unique clustered index idx date 
on the view that's the view name I just created actually it's by date right that's it that's the uh, view I just created up here and uh, then it gives it the key I'm going to create it on okay I'm going to go ahead and run this clustered index create this clustered index and that's going to take a while to run okay so I'll be back after that finishes so then I create the index view which is only on the date in this case and we'll see how this performs compared to the one that uses the earlier index okay okay my index view is finished this is a good point to discuss the difference between enterprise edition and standard edition enterprise edition will take the initial query we wrote okay this query here and it will automatically look for the best index on the table DBO fact online sales okay the best one the best it can find there it will look for the best index or the best index view to make the quickest return of the results set possible for this query that's what the enterprise edition will do the standard edition does half of that it looks for the best index on that table it can find and uses that to get the best performance it does not use or even allows the index view to be considered in the query optimization plan or its use okay that's a big difference between enterprise and standard and that's what uh, just another reason why enterprise costs a lot more but not the only reason there's many many reasons okay so if you run this you will not get the query plan to grab the index view but enterprise edition would okay so but that that still doesn't mean you're out of the out of the game you still got that index view and it's still super super fast because it's already aggregated and every time you aggregate the, the the base table this table you add rows you delete rows you do anything to that table it automatically will update the clustered index on that on that indexed view that you created that's the beauty of it you don't have to do an extra step in your ETL or anything to populate an aggregated table and a different table you just go ahead and just put it into the into the base table it will automatically behind the scenes update that uh, index view for you okay that's the beauty of that is the beauty of this okay now but there is a downside and the downside is for you to get this you for you to get the exact same result as this you would have to write this like this so basically the view the views name is the index view is right here DBO V right and you wouldn't use a count big because that was already in the, that's already in the clustered index view it's already in the clustered index you don't need to aggregate it again it's already been aggregated so it's already sitting over there aggregated just waiting for you to to ask for it okay so when you run this it will run directly against the uh, view okay so but in and you and this is the same in enterprise edition you run it directly against the view or it's implicit in the um, in the query of the base table but in standard edition you must you can run this but it will run so slow it will run against the base table with no indexes or maybe with the index from the base table it won't use aggregates you built in that clustered index that you that is it's all about in standard edition in, in enterprise edition it will it's fine but in standard edition you have to add a hint and without the hint it won't perform okay and the hint name is this no expand and when you put the no expand on it it will run extremely fast okay 
Let me make sure my statistics I.O. is on. Let me make sure I have a query, uh, my actual, include actual uh, query plan on, which I believe, yeah, it's on now. I, it was on before. Okay, so now I'm going to run this, okay, and we're going to look at the execution plan, okay? There it is. Again, look at this, immediate. And this is how it would come back in standard edition. All right. But again, how can I emphasize this more than ever? No expand. You must have no expand hint at the end of the from clause. Otherwise, it won't utilize it. Okay. So when I go to the execution plan, I look here. I can see under object down there. I can see the it's using that IDX date, which is the um, clustered index I have on the on the index view. Okay, so we know it's using and there's a view name V fact online sales by date. Okay, so it's 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 scanning that index. But remember, that's an aggregate date. It's just like an aggregate table. It's much much smaller, shorter, okay, and and, and skinnier, okay. And so that's why you're getting this incredible performance. Let's look at your, uh, let's look at the results, the messages for your I.O. Look at that, eight pages, only eight pages were read. Okay, compare that to when you run it up here against the main fact table and how many, uh, how much data there was, data pages had to come back from that. When we ran it earlier, used the non-clustered uh, date include sales amount index. It came back with, and I wrote it down here, three million seven hundred thirty-two eight seventy-seven pages of I/O to get the result. And that's why it took three minutes plus to get a result set. Okay, eight pages versus three million seven hundred thirty two and that's three hundred three million seven thirty two if you use an index if you didn't have an index that could have been twenty million who knows how many million that would have been. astronomical okay so using an index is good but it's nowhere near what you can get when you use an index view okay let's pause and take a breath. I know that was pretty exciting. And we'll continue now, okay, to a new new part of this lesson, but I just want to slow down and change gears a little bit here. You know, aren't in the index view, you can't it's not gonna work. So but in some cases you'll be able to increase your response time for your report users many, many fold just by using index views. So you need to maybe do some inventory of your code and of your tables and of your queries and your reports to see whether this could be utilized. And if it can, you're gonna get an incredibly big bang for your buck. Okay, I'm gonna continue this now. I just wanna real that you know emphasize that this is what we're seeing. This is where the bang is, right here. But I'm gonna, now the rest of the video, I'm gonna go ahead and create three other index views on the same table. The next one is going to be um, by where it's going to be date store. So it's a little more granular on the group by. And then the one after that is going to be date store and product. Remember the scenario I said where you drill down from date to store to product. Okay. In some report you have. Okay. Or the interface for your user. I'm also going to create a report that does that. Okay, so we can actually use this behind the scenes and we're going to see how fast you can traverse aggregates on a 500 million row table. And that's going to be pretty cool. Okay, so right now I'm going to go ahead and create these other two views. Okay, this we already created the date one. Now the next one I'm going to create date store which you see here, I'm bringing in date in the store, I'm doing the same thing with the sum of the sales amount. 
you're going to have all these aggregates spread all the way out, okay? So don't think you, you know, you only have to have one. Uh, count big, you have to have, that's a requirement of any index view. And um, here, this one again, you, you have the, uh, I have the index and I'm creating it by date, key, and store. Okay, and then here, here's my date, store, product view, which is even more granular. I group it by the product. There we go. Everything looks cool. Uh oh, wait a second. Where's my, where's my clustered index? I gotta create a clustered index there. So let me just copy that. And, and we're just gonna call that the store product. And I add product down here, comma, product key. Okay. And that looks good. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and run this, and when it finishes, I'm going to come back. Now, when it, you know, when it first creates one of these, these uh, index views, creating the view itself is easy. Creating the clustered index or persist that data, that's going to take a while. So if you've got a huge table, prepare to wait a while. I mean, some of these took about 25 minutes, 30 minutes. They could take hours, you know, the more complicated the... The group by is okay the more aggregates you have in there it might take longer so prepare yourself you could if you want to to kind of figure out what how much time it's going to take you could put a where clause in here and just say give me the top 20 million and uh or you know top 10 million and let's see how long that takes to create it just to get yourself a, a baseline so how you know for you can plan your evening or your how long your job's going to take you know so you don't run into other processes and you find the right window of time to do this okay so here we go we have the create view we have the create clustered index there i'm going to highlight those oops boy this thing this thing is has a speeding ticket on this thing let me use my my uh, keyboard so I'm going roller coaster or roller skates okay so i'm going to run these two and then we're going to come back Okay, to conclude this video, I created a report or that does that drill down that I talked about from the date to the date store to the date store product uh, for anywhere in the fact online sales. Now, let's remember the fact online sales has 517 million rows. Okay, and this report I generated is able to perform at incre incredible speed because of the index views I have on it and the and the and the uh, way they work under the covers uh, when you run certain queries. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show you these reports and the astonishing performance you get get the, from them. So remember this number. Uh, the number of rows is 517,731,928, okay? I'm going to run the report now, preview. And notice at the top, there's our count of 517,731,928. Uh, then here is my first level. This is where it's hitting the date, um, the date uh, index view, okay? And as you saw, it comes back extremely quick. This isn't even, it's not necessarily cash, but I'm just going to go through all these pages, right? And I'm just going to, okay, it goes up to 2009, okay, and all these numbers. So let's just pick one, okay? Just out of the, I'm going to pick the top one up here, uh, uh, 2009.02.22. Okay, remember these numbers, 480, 87, 724, okay? I click there, 2002.22, 480, 87. Okay, I'm going to click down on one of these stores, 307, I'm going to click on, and that has 148 and 27 sales amount. Okay, let's remember those numbers, 148, 27 sales amount, okay. With the index views, it's immediate. I'm hitting a table of 517 million rows, okay, because the index views are pre-aggregated everything is at my fingertips I can drill down from anywhere 
and get this kind of speed. Okay, so that's 2000. Let's just go back a couple. Let's go back and do 306, which is 172.30 for the, this date, and it's immediate. Okay, this is when you design and architect it and model it correctly and use the index views, you can do an ex extremely fantastic things when it comes to performance. Okay, so now I'm going to go back. I'm going to take another one at random. Let's take this one at the bottom here. Uh, 2000, okay, 0325. 407 is the count. 80 million is the amount of money, okay? 0325. 407 is a count, 80 million is the, is the sales amount. Okay, 0325. Drill down on 306. Let's drill down on 199. We should see 104 and 31 broken out by product. There's our total 104 and 31 broken out by product. Pages of product. Okay, just to show you the code I have behind this, and you can pause the video and look at it more you know more carefully but if I go to my main report there's really three reports there it goes from date which is a hyperlink and that goes to date store report and date store has a hyperlink and that goes to date store product now the, you got to know some reporting services to do this but basically there's three reports here okay one calls the other okay they all kind of look the same so it can appear to be one report okay so on my main report I have a data set okay so if I look at that data set again this is really simple uh, this is really basic okay so here's the view, here's the code <coughs> and as you see it's the same as I just showed you for the select command you you call it up against the the index view of course you must have the no expand I can't emphasize that enough so as you see this is the view for the date and that's at the main at the main screen level and um, so that looks good now I'm gonna go into the other there are other two other reports in those store product and store and so this is the one that's the by date by store if you look at that code again you don't see the group bytes because they've already been done in the view and they're already aggregated so you don't have a sum or account they've already been done so you do have an order by okay so that's the that's the state store view which you can see here so I'm calling directly against the views each of the different views and then the store product it's the same idea but this one I have date store key product key I go against the v, the uh, the index view called uh, v fact online sales by date store product, and of course I can't emphasize it one more time. The last time I'll talk about it, no expand. You got to have no expand in there if you have standard edition. If you don't put no expand in, you're faking yourself out and you're got terrible performance. Okay, so that's it. So that's the um, end of this this lesson and uh, I hope you learned something I think this these index views are just the bomb and I really recommend them um, and I think you'll be happy once you start using them thanks this concludes this video please come and see more of my videos at www.sqlcoop.com thank you